Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to take a look at the Fire Sorceress, which has now become very playable. Although we don't have any lowering of monster resistances in the Fire Mastery like we do in the Cold Mastery, the fire attacks do an immense amount of damage, so that a few minus resistances by the items are already enough to clean up properly. We will look at different budget classes, even in the low budget you can find useful solutions that work fine. So let's get started. Stat points are set as usual, strength enough for the equipment, remaining points go into vitality. Dexterity is generally used in PvP for the block rate and energy is only increased if you play builds with energy shield, which is not the case here. Let's look at the skill tree. Apart from the usual one point skills frozen armor, static field, telekinesis, teleport and warmth, all other points go into the fire tree. For variant A, 20 points each in Firebolt, Fireball, Meteor and Fire Mastery. The remaining points can be distributed as you like. You could increase Warmth or additionally pull up the Hydra. It gets extra damage from Fireball and Firebolt, which we have outskilled anyway. At level 98 we even can get the Hydra to 20. In build A you mainly play Fireball and Meteor, but you can also use Hydra, Firewall and Blaze secondarily. Here you can choose your own priorities. If you don't use the Hydras and want a stronger Firewall instead, you will invest the points there. So the skill tree looks like this. When playing through the game, you will first unlock everything you need and then get Fireball and Meteor as high as possible first. That's where we get the most damage out of. This build can be played in all budget classes. Another way to distribute the skill points can be maximizing the firewall and its synergies plus 20 points in fire mastery and at the end also up to 20 points in blaze. Playing this tree you use inferno and firewall as main attacks and blaze is also very strong here for being used in many situations. Variant B also works with all budget classes. Here we can see a table for the damage development of the different skills, each with synergies maxed out and fire mastery on the same level. In addition, also the breakpoints for the sorceress. Now the equipment. In the lower budget range, we use those three Talrasha set pieces that you usually always get together first. Orb, mask and belt. The orb gives plus 1 to sorcerer skills when wearing 2 set pieces and minus 15% fire resistances for monsters when wearing 3, so this is what we wanna have. In addition we can play a spirit shield and a viper skin, a fire skill amulet or if you have rising sun, there we also get a bunch of fire absorb and of course mage fist. In the ring slots we want to get some resistances, as well as in the boot slot. Here we can use Aldurus to add plenty fire resistances. In the inventory we also go for resistances. Additional life, some faster hit recovery and some mana can't hurt either. Besides of course you play an inside mercenary. With this setup we get up to skill level 28, in build A that's about 8000 fireball and 15000 meteor damage. In build B we get 14000 firewall and 5000 inferno. Also we've got minus 15% fire resistances for monsters. In the medium budget there are several options. On the one hand you can play the complete Tal Rasha set and gradually add fire facets to the parts. Another option is to use Talrasha's orb, amulet and armor, so you can wear an arachnid mesh and still can choose a helmet. There you can go for a harlequin crest to increase magic find or the runeward flickering flame. 
for plus 3 fire skills and up to minus 15% fire resistances. Using facets you can reach minus 40% fire resistances. From here on also Stones of Jordan as well as Torch, Ani and Skill Trumps come on the plan. Going without the Tal Rasha set we can also play Maras, Ormus and Ishutas or Hoto. With Ormus especially variants that increase the main skill are nice. In the medium budget range we get to skill level 35 to 40 and up to minus 40% fire resistances for monsters. In the high budget we also have some nice options. The Phoenix Shield lowers monster resistances by 28% and it also has the Redemption Aura, which allows us to constantly regain health and mana from corpses. Additionally, you can play the Rune Ward in the weapon slot as well, but it's not really necessary. I prefer to continue using the Ishutas or even the Talrasha combination. The charms in the inventory can of course also be upgraded and the mercenary can use Infinity, 40 and an Andy's face. At the high end we get up to minus 76% fire resistances for the monsters and skill levels above 40. Now for the gameplay. Fireball is very powerful due to its area damage. It flies directly at the monsters and also has high speed and range. We can also fire it in high frequency as fast as the casting rate goes. The meteor falls down on the monsters from above just like the blizzard, but it takes a bit longer until the attack comes. You can always put it on the map in between, best in places with high monster density or on bosses. Very good targets are also monsters that don't move that much, like archers or the skeleton summoners from Act 2. The meteor has a casting delay of 1.2 seconds. The firewall is very good against monsters that stay in one spot too. Unlike the meteor, it comes instantly. It is quite narrow but very long. It also has a casting delay which is 1.4 seconds. The Hydra has no more casting delay but its maximum number is limited to 6. The Hydras can be spread in the room tactically as an additional damage source, but they also can be used to make dangerous rooms accessible from a safe distance. Blaze can be used against monsters that run after you, playing the firewall build this will happen more often. The flame ray of inferno is quite narrow, so monsters can easily pass it, but it can get a high range. By the way, Blaze also increases the running speed of the sorcerers. Similar to the Cold Sorceress and her Blizzard, the Fire Sorceress can always use Firewall, Hydras and Meteor as a precast, for example in this throne room. Or to kill from a safe position, for example at Mephisto or in the Chaos Sanctuary.
Fire immune monsters are no longer an obstacle, thanks to the Thunder Charm. Even using the low budget gear, you can get them dead fast enough. To maximize the damage output, the Fire Sword can always combine her attacks, just like the Cold Sorceress. With sufficiently good gear, you can even manage very well on player's 8. Look at this Diablo killing speed in players 8. It is ridiculous.
The fireball and meteor build plays very quickly, especially because the fireballs fly so fast. Inferno on the other hand spreads very slowly. In build A you have more variety of attacks and it also performs better. Build B on the other hand is more anti-mainstream and rather something for the player who doesn't put so much value on the fastest kill speed but likes to play some more unusual characters that you don't see such often in Battle.net. Both are fun to play in their own way and thanks to the Thunder Charm they now work flawlessly and without any immunity problems. I hope you enjoyed, take care and may the loot be with you. Come on, follow me.